Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with the Spain News Update. We'll have a look at some of the main stories that have caught my attention in the press in Spain over the last couple of days or so. And we'll also take a look at some comments that have been left on videos in recent times. I want to say a big thanks to all of the people that have supported the channel in recent times, whether it's by buying me a coffee through the Super Thanks option, the Super Chat options on YouTube, the new membership option on YouTube also, and new members of the channel, John, Ken and Andres, bienvenidos, and also to my long-term supporters on Patreon for your support. Now straight into the news and Spain's drought issues dominating headlines around the country today, especially the problems in Andalusia when it comes to water. And as we can read here, Andalusia warns of possible water restrictions this summer and announces more measures in view of the extreme situation. Juan Manuel Moreno, the president of the Andalusian region government talked on Thursday for the first time about possibly needing to use less water this summer because it hasn't rained much. He announced the new plan which includes 200 million euros for water projects because the situation is very serious. He asked the 8.5 million people in Andalusia to use water very carefully. If it doesn't rain in spring we will probably have to start the summer with less water use in big cities, Moreno said. This will affect big Andalusian cities like Seville, Malaga and Córdoba. The situation is an emergency. Andalusia would need 30 days of continuous rain to get through the summer, so people need to get ready for less water use in coastal areas and big cities. So there we go, and some strong words for the Premier of Andalusia, Mr Moreno. It is an extreme situation, and if it doesn't rain continuously for 30 days and 30 nights, it's going to be a long, dry summer in that part of Spain. So it'll be interesting interesting to see what type of restrictions Andalusia puts in place if it doesn't rain for those 30 days continuously and what type of impact this drought will have on the tourist sector in that part of Spain which as we know is very 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 important. Now the drought issues in Andalusia have also been making the Portuguese press in recent times because as we know one of the plans that Andalusia has is to get water from Portugal. And as we can read in this headline, Spain insisting on water from Portugal to tackle drought. We are in an extreme situation. It's not about being alarming, it's about being realistic, said Juan Manuel Moreno, known as Juanma Moreno, in an intervention before the Commission of Experts on Drought created by the regional government the Junta de Andalusia. He called for the channeling of European funds to the region, specifically for works related to water management, infrastructure and greater involvement of the central government of Spain, advocating for more transfers and transfers between Spanish rivers, but also for the study of transfers between countries, namely from Portugal. It is not the first time that Andalusian leaders have spoken about the possibility of asking Portugal for water, which would depend on contact between the governments of the two countries. So according to that Portuguese press outlet, Spain insisting on water from Portugal to help tackle the drought issues. And to be honest, I don't know if Portugal has extra water to spare, enough water to give to Spain. And considering that the two biggest rivers in Portugal start their journey in Spain, the Tagus and the Douro rivers, that is, it might be a bit cheeky Spain asking Portugal for that water. Just my opinion. Now we have been debating in recent times about about salaries here in Spain, why salaries are lower than other European countries. Well, this could be one of the reasons. And it is that Spain's productivity falls by 7% in 20 years, while Germany's rises. Spain is less productive now than it was at the start of the century, which means that it has less ability to grow and create wealth. The overall productivity has dropped 7.3%. Over the past 24 years, the economy has grown in terms of GDP, but the efficiency with which companies Companies use labor and capital, productivity has not improved, according to data from the Productivity and Competitiveness Observatory created by the BBVA Foundation and IVIE. This decline in Spain is in contrast to the increases seen in other advanced economies like the United States, a 15.5% increase, and Germany, 11.8%. The report warns that the lack of progress in productivity slows down GDP growth per person and widens the gap with the European 
European Union. In 2000, the difference between Spain and the EU was 2.4%, but by 2022, this gap had increased to 14.4%. So Spain's productivity since the year 2000 falling by 7%, while other countries around us, for example Germany, productivity has increased. And as I said, one of the reasons why salaries in this country continue to be low right there in that article. It all has to do with productivity. Because how can you ask for a wage increase if you're less productive? That's the question. And the final piece of news we'll look at today, and it's a topic that has been causing a lot of debate on this channel in recent times about a Spanish woman that was kicked out of the United Kingdom because she didn't have the correct paperwork to get in, despite her husband and dog living in the UK. And as we can see in this headline from The Guardian, EU citizens are being kicked out of the UK. In Spain, people are asking, why not treat Brits the same way? Four years after the UK officially left the European Union, you can still be taken aback reading about Brexit self-defeating if sometimes unintended consequences. A Spanish woman was detained at Luton Airport and denied re-entry after a Christmas visit to Spain, even though she had been living and working in the UK with her family for years. How does detaining a 34-year-old veterinary nursing apprentice living with her husband and in-laws in Bedfordshire, returning home after a trip to meet her sister's baby, and in possession of a UK government document stating her right to work, contribute to safe and secure borders. It obviously doesn't. Was Brexit really about this? Did taking back control mean kicking out our neighbours? Asks this person in The Guardian. And a good question it is too. And the headline of that article also saying that here in Spain, some people are now asking the question, why don't we do it to Brits here also? Make it tougher for them to get in. That's what some people are suggesting. Now let's have a look at some of the comments that have been left on videos recently. One here from Barrios. If you are offered a shingles vaccine, take it. Worst three weeks I have had for many years recently with it. Yeah, Barrios, thanks for the comment. And this is a question that popped up in yesterday's live stream. Somebody asked about the shingles vaccine here in Spain, if it is given out to people over the age of 70, I think, not sure, because obviously I am not at that age yet. But all I know is that many people in the comment section said that, yes, it is a good idea to get this shingles vaccine, because as Barrios points out there, it is not the best thing to have. A friend of mine had shingles a couple of years ago, I think it was, straight related. He's around 50 years of age and he had a terrible time with shingles. Apparently shingles has something to do with chicken pox and if you had chicken pox as a child there is a high chance that you will get shingles later in life. So the recommendation of that person and other people in the comment section get the shingles vaccine if it is available. If it is available here in Spain please let me know in the comment section below. One here from FRGV, Sanchez is so full of it. Yeah, FRGV, thanks for the comment. And many people would agree with you that the current Prime Minister of Spain, Mr. Pedro Sanchez, is absolutely full of it. But as we know, he managed to get re-elected with the help of various political parties around the country. He had enough votes, so people here in Spain obviously voted for him still, despite, as you say, a lot of people thinking that he is full of it. But let's Let's be honest, he's not the only politician out there currently that is full of it. In fact, I reckon we could compile a fairly long list of politicians that fit that characteristic, right? One here from Pau, perhaps the business community has different ideas, better ideas, frankly, than Pedro Sanchez in helping people advance economically. Capitalism builds, socialism steals. The absolute best tool in helping people escape poverty, a job. Yeah, Pau, thanks for the comment. And no doubt the business community has other ideas to those of Pedro Sanchez. We saw Mr. Sanchez the other day in Davos in Switzerland talking to the business community, the Spanish business community and the international business community to get on board and support his plans to make Spain a better place for the average Spaniard. However, I get the impression that the business community here in Spain is not overly impressed by Mr. Sanchez and his policies, especially those extraordinary taxes that he has placed on big business. So an interesting debate, and let me know what you think of the statement in that comment, capitalism builds, socialism steals. Let me know in the comment section below. I'm interested to hear what you think. One here from IE Meave. Hi, 
advice, Drew. Great work and loads of thanks. My advice coming from experience is to keep away from Wise. They have thousands of disgruntled customers on all social media and beyond. Just in Facebook, there is a group with 15,000 members. When it goes well, it is great, but then puff, horrific. The story goes as a common trait. Deactivate without notice, claiming some unspecified breach. Then lead you on and eventually, no, you can't have your money back and we can't say why. You have been warned. Yeah, i.e. thanks for the comment. And previous to this comment, there had been a lot of support for the company Wise. Lots of people saying that it's a great company in order to transfer money from one country to another, especially when it comes to lower transaction rates and lower fees. But you saying there, watch out. It is not what it appears to be. But again, I can't comment about this company because I've never used them. But if you have used the company wise and you like the company, let us know in the comment section below. Or if you agree with this recent comment and you don't like the company wise for whatever reason, let us know also in the comment section below and we'll try to get an objective opinion on that company. One here from Square Woodworking, just buy a VPN, the app ends up useless. Yes, yeah, Square Wood, thanks for the comment and obviously related to an article that we saw the other day about how the government here in Spain is talking about building an app in order to restrict access to adult websites, uh, porn websites, let's say. They don't want children to be able to access these websites and they're trying to work out how to best do this. And as we saw in the news yesterday, in some cases, countries where they have tried to do this, it hasn't been all that successful. And experts are said to be warning the government here to be careful with what they try to do. And you're right, a VPN is a way to get around these content restrictions. And I'm sure that many people will get a VPN if these new regulations come into force. Time will tell. One here from Gary, low wages in Spain is because the employer has to pay 800 euros national insurance every month for every worker. Where in other countries, the workers pay national insurance insurance and it's nowhere near 800 euros a month. Yeah, Gary, thanks for the comment. And you're right. That is one of the reasons why salaries are low here in Spain, because a lot of money goes to the government. I don't know whether the figure is 800 euros a month because it is a percentage of what somebody earns. So it could be less or more than 800 euros a month. But employers do have to pay a lot of money for every worker. And that's one of the reasons why the black economy still flourishes here in Spain, because a lot of people get paid part of their salary under the table. But remember, and this is what the government tells us here in Spain, that the money that you pay to them every month helps to pay for your pension further down the line and also for you to access the national health system. It's all part of the social contract that you have to abide to when you live and work in Spain. One here from Falkenhog. Hello, fly down Sunday from the cold north. Thanks for the program. Yeah, Falkenhog, thanks for the comment and glad you liked the program. And I hope everything goes well with your trip down to sunny Spain from the cold north of Europe. Lots of people like yourself head south for the winter, whether it's the Canary Islands, Andalusia, or the Levante coast, trying to get better weather than you have in those northern countries. In fact, even with the weather that we have in this part of Spain, during the winter months, a trip to the Mediterranean or the Canary Islands comes in fairly handy around this time of year. And the final comment here from Thomas. Hi, where's the picture of that thumbnail at? Looks nice. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, Tom, thanks for the comment. And the thumbnail that you are referring to, I think, is this one. And this is a picture taken in the Mediterranean seaside resort of Calpe, down there in the province of Alicante in the Valencian community. And the picture was sent in by regular viewer Jeff, who lives in Albacete, but I imagine spent some time in that part of Spain over the Christmas period. And I must say that Jeff sent through quite a few pictures that we'll be seeing in coming live streams, and the quality of the pictures, very, very good. Jeff is a very good photographer indeed. And if anybody has pictures that they have taken in Spain and would like to see them on the backdrop during those live streams, the email address is this one here, Spain Speaks at gmail.com. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. If you have an opinion about any of the topics that I have spoken about today, the comment section is the place for you. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.